When I was five, my father was still in art school. He gave me a little paint set, and I fell in love with the tree outside the window, and I started to paint it. I was also the class poet, and my father encouraged me much more to be a poet than to be a painter. They were very young, my parents, when I was born. I always felt that I was the strongest person in my family. Not just as strong as my father, stronger than both of them. That has become part of the complexity of the way that I deal with the world, is that I'm very intrepid, dogged and intrepid. I don't know when I've lost. I don't acknowledge failure, I just don't acknowledge it. My name is Pat Steer and I'm an artist. Silver asked me a question. He said, you spent your whole life trying to disappear. It's true, and I, I was trying to take my ego out of the art and my body out of the art. I want the paintings to express something in the will of nature, like an equation in a way, strangely like, the, like when a physicist looks for what makes the universe hang together. I was looking in color and paint for what makes the universe hang together. And although the paintings are pictures of nothing, it's like all the equations you find looking for the equation that says, this is why all the planets don't fall down on our head. This is why we're sinking into the abyss. They're looking for that equation. That's what I'm looking for in my paintings. It sounds so grandiose and insane, but it's a spiritual quest. There's a whole idea in the 60s that women in general could not be abstract painters. Like, they were lacking the gene, the abstraction gene. Where did you find the strength to be able to challenge uh, those kinds of very male attitudes? I didn't have to find the strength. I had the strength. I was born strong. I think it's my feminist statement, surviving. I can remember, I had a boyfriend who played cards in the front room of my loft with all the guys who are forgotten, who thought, who is that anyway, what is she doing? And I was painting in the back part of the loft in the studio while they were playing cards. They're still playing cards and I'm still painting. Duchamp said anything can be art. We can make anything seem like art. John said everything is art. And he was right, but he picked out what part of everything to listen to. Speaking to John, I thought, well, if I throw paint, that's chance too. My idea was not to touch the canvas, not to paint, but to pour the paint and let the paint itself make a picture. I set the limitations. The limitations, of course, are the color, the size, the wind in the room, and how I put the paint on. And then, Everything outside of me controls how that paint falls. It's a joy to let the painting make itself. It takes away all kinds of responsibility because I can come in in the morning and see what I did yesterday and say, oh, look what the paint did. The paint does it. The inspiration of Sal was just, he was fearless. He just did what he did. He never expressed self-doubt. He made some paintings, I, I don't know what he called them, but I called them the blobs. A background of a certain color and a blob, like a, an amorphous form on it in a different color. And I said to him, well, how did you choose those two colors to put together? What was your system? Because he made systems. And he said, well, I choose one beautiful color I love and put it next to another color I love. I thought, that's what I do. I did a series of white paintings with black in the middle. So this is a companion painting to those with white with black on the sides. They're very simple. It looks like conceptual permutations when they're all together. They were kind of a, uh, an homage to my friend Solowit who died the year I painted these. You don't grow up alone. And for me, the people I learned from are treasures. 
And I love art, and I love artists. Other people's work is a tremendous uh, inspiration. Agnes, you found limitless variations on one mark, on a horizontal line. That was an incredible exercise of hope. Her work was about pure light, just pure light. Probably in the late 60s, she cut off her, her relationships in New York. She bought a trailer and she drove around the country till she found a place she wanted to live. And so I would call her from Santa Fe and then I would go. We became real friends and when she said, she was very perceptive and I never complained about, I never even told Agnes about my family, but Agnes said to me, Pat's problem is her mother didn't like her. And she, she was just, she knew that. Not because we spoke about it, but because she knew it. And Agnes's mother didn't like her either. So I think that was more than art, that was our bond. Don't you ever see yourself? You see yourself and other people all the time, everywhere. Although I don't remember childhood clearly, more like I remember events. I think all children have difficult childhoods and some are more difficult. And then the child, like the puppy, responds to the difficulty in different ways. Memory is so strange. I have vivid, vivid recollections of moments. There's a Virginia Woolf coat. Sometimes I see the dead on street corners and in dreams. I was the first child and there was kind of sibling rivalry between me and my parents. They were very young. My father was jealous and not supportive. And I can remember, he died in 71 or two. I was in the first Whitney, it was called the Whitney Annual at that time, and the whole early feminist movement that I was part of. And my picture of me and my painting was in Time magazine with Feminists prominent in their field. You know how the world loves a young artist, so I was the artist in the issue. My father was in oxygen in the hospital dying, and I shoved the magazine toward him and said, look. He, of course, couldn't see. It was my last communication with him. Look, I'm in Time magazine. And it's strange because my career has been the opposite because I don't want to be a famous artist. I want to be a great artist. This is a burial mound where old loves and old gloves and <laughs> lost things and found things are buried here. This is a burial mound where old gloves and lost gloves and other things are buried here. <laughs> 